I'm Dan. Hi, I'm Wilco. I'm Liam. And I'm Neil. Um, we're all part of Andy's Man Club. And we've been really privileged, and you've all seen now, a great episode that's just been out involving us guys and the full storyline of what it's like to actually attend an Andy's Man Club. I thought this would be really hard. A room full of strangers. Which really makes it easier. The whole experience from start to finish has just been mind blowing. Um, just just being here, sat in like an Andy's Man Club environment, um, brings it all back to a Monday. Um, just being able to watch the, 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 the lads just uh, act and everything, it's just been brilliant. Obviously, there's a lot of people watching this who don't know what an Andy's Man Club actually looks like. They've seen that episode now, give them a bit of an insight. Just let people know a bit more about it. Um, essentially, it's you know peer-to-peer -peer support. No one's there in a professional capacity, um, and it's quite an informal setting of just being able to kind of get stuff off your chest. Get I use it um, now as a bit of a kind of a checkpoint for my week to kind of go off. I know that if something happens in my week now, I can always think and use that to be like, right, I can get that out, uh, off my chest on on a Monday. Um, and it's it's just kind of lads talking and sharing and kind of um, opening up and and being able to support each other as well. Hi, I'm Liam, um, and this is my story. So I was lucky enough, um, kind of growing up or, you know, throughout that I've never really been diagnosed with um, any kind of official uh, mental health um, diagnosis. I've grown up with it kind of in my family um, and supported family members, but my mental health kind of come to a bit of a crooks in early 2020. So 2019 on paper should have been the best year of my life. I just got married, uh, just bought my first house and then just moved jobs into a career I, I really wanted to kind of get into. So, you know, three huge things there. And then January uh, 2020, when kind of just moved into the house, everything kind of really came crashing down. There was no real kind of um, big moment for that. It was just kind of, everything was a, just a bit gray. Couldn't really get myself out of a funk and got, you know, was just kind of found myself getting quite emotional over stupid things. And they, that was coming out in kind of anger, frustration, uh, uh, tears, kind of whatever kind of method it could really. Um, and it wasn't until I was driving um, on the motorway listening to uh, Storms' new album at the time that I kind of just burst into tears and trying to drive at 70 miles an hour um, while crying isn't uh, the safest or practical. So it, I kind of got home, spoke to my wife about how I was feeling, kind of, it was the first time I didn't re really ever opened up to, to anybody. Um, and she kind of suggested that, you know, I look at getting help, ignored that um, and kind of carried on like, it never happened, but also since then, uh, my wife went through miscarriages, and that was something that kind of it really helped me kind of go to Andy's Man Club, speak to some guys who had been in that similar situation, and then go home and be kind of that support for my wife and kind of be the best person I could be, really. And then through my wife's, uh, recent pregnancy, which was you know successful, there was a lot of anxiety there and I was kind of constantly kind of talking about that and the, the guys at Andersman Club were a huge support to be able to again kind of be that rock for me and be that kind of outlet where I could then go home and, and do the same for um, my wife and I try and be, I really pride myself on being a kind of good husband and good friend and it's, it's because I get to go to Andersman Club and kind of have my outlet and kind of learn those supportive skills and uh, what can be done to then kind of go on and, and help them. So it's been a huge kind of help for, for me constantly. I think one of the key points as well is for, for me that I think the headline around it, as you can see from banners and things like that, is around suicide and depression and anxiety. It's not all about that, is it? There's a lot of humour around these mantle. Yeah, it's kind of, it's just being able to kind of open up, but then also kind of have that laugh. And it's important to have that mix. And that's what we saw in the, the episode today of kind of like, what do you need to get off your chest? Um, but actually kind of being able to leave on a bit more of a light-hearted note really helps the lads kind of take that week forward then. Absolutely, I think one of the key points that people will see from that episode is the chat when Neil will facilitate him and talk to Paddy over by the brew station at the break time and just asked him how we're finding it. So I think we, we all do that as facilitators, you will go and sort of make a beeline in the break for the lads who aren't you just to check in and make sure that they are okay with everything and Paddy's reaction is probably common from a lot of guys in it, that sort of 
relief that they've come and started talking. Hi, uh, I'm Dan uh, from Andy's Man Club, Hebden Bridge. Um, this is my story. So from from uh, childhood, um, I had a bit of a tough upbringing. Um, Mum and Dad split up, I was 10 at the time, so just bordering high school. So I knew a lot of what were going on, uh, whereas my brother and sister, they were a lot younger and they didn't really know. Um, so there's, there were that to deal, deal with. Um, got bullied um, at back end of primary school, which didn't help things. Um, my um, story took a bit of a, um, a dive in 2000, well I left school in 2001 um, and started working with my dad and found the business. Um, and then one day, we're obviously driving um, in 2004, I witnessed a serious accident on the motorway. Um, don't really want to go too much detail because it still haunts me to this day. Um, I lost um, a good friend in Afghanistan in 2012, uh, Jack, uh, when we got the news. Um, it was absolutely heartbreaking. And the, the one person who I, who I talked to most in my life was my grandma. And she passed away in 2006. Um, followed shortly after, um, a week later, my cousin died of an overdose, um, which hit me like a, a, a bus, basically. Um, I couldn't find the, the, just the whole traumatic um, accident, grandma dying, Jack dying, it just got on top of me and I couldn't find a way out and uh, one night I just decided to write a suicide note and proceed on to try and end my life um, with my dog, um, he was by my side, um, I cried and proceeded on. Um, a few days later um, I woke up um, and um, I just carried on. Um, I did try and help uh, private counselling um, at the time, which were, we were good. It kept me alive because uh, all I wanted to do was just keep on ending my life. Uh, I just didn't want to be here anymore. And for me, I've, I've, I've always had a problem with confidence. Um, from a young age, school, through school, everything like that. The, the teacher said, oh, you speak up, I'm, 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 I'm a bit nervous rep. So it took me two attempts to walk through the doors of Andy's Bank Club, Ebden Bridge. Um, I was met by the facilitator at the time, Jamie. He said, it's not as bad as you think. Uh, just, if you don't want to speak, just listen. And I think for the first, probably, three or four sessions, I just blubbered my way through. It just it gave me so much warmth and so much comfort um, that I'd never felt before. Um, and I thought, I'll give this a go. And I, and I did. And from 2017, I've been involved with Andy's Man Club. So yeah, I've been facilitator for over five years, uh, trying to give back uh, for endless fundraising and raising awareness for Andy's Man Club. Like, it, it saved my life, so that's why I want to give back. So that's my story. Obviously we've seen Emmerdale, it's a huge, huge programme. Shaq, tell us what you think the impact will be for Andy's Man Club as a charity? Uh, I think it's going to be massive. Um, like, like you say, um, Emmerdale won a biggest soaps on tel British television. Um, and for them to, to do this, is it, it's going to be huge. Yeah, I hope it does enable even if it's just one man, you know, I hope it enables that one guy just to see it and, and think um, it's time to talk and time to do something because I think a lot of the guys who get along to Andy's Man Club, they might think about coming for a long time before they actually do come. Um, you know, I was there myself, I thought about it, put it in the diary, didn't go, put it in the diary again, didn't go and then kept doing it until I actually went on a Monday. And I've been going for about three years now, like every week it's part of my um, calendar is non-negotiable so yeah I think hopefully it'll encourage more people to do that. Nationwide every week we see Steve's and Clive's and Paddy's all over telling those stories and I think the, the big message for me from that is you're not on your own, it's not just you and I think we've all felt that relief when you walk into a room on a Monday night that you're not alone with other guys, it's not that you're wishing these guys to be struggling but you're just 
really pleased that you're not going through this battle alone. There's other people that are supporting going through it. Yeah, and you kind of you hit the nail on the head there. Um, it's it's that kind of walking in and seeing. Uh, I think you have preconceived ideas of what it's going to be like, and to be able to walk in, it's a bit. It takes a weight off your chest just knowing that actually you're not alone. When we talk about men mental health, you know, people who talk instantly think um, kind of a diagnosed mental health illness like anxiety, depression, or kind of suicidal thoughts, like you were saying. But actually, what Andy's Man Club does, and I think where we add real value, is kind of it's for anyone that's just going through that storm and kind of going through, you know, a bit of a bad time. And it doesn't have to be something massive, it could just be kind of a series of kind of small things that has just really got someone down. And we, have, we find that quite a lot. Um, kind of those guys coming into our groups and, and being able to help those and seeing the difference of a guy that comes in from week one to week four yeah. is is a huge kind of lift. And it's, it's why uh, myself and I'm sure kind of the other facilitators keep coming and uh, keep volunteering each week. When I first came, I was really struggling. I'd lost all my joy. I was like really just, you know, I could tell in myself I was monotone. I, was, I wasn't enjoying anything really. Um, but I didn't have any coping, I didn't have any real healthy coping mechanisms. Like I had a lifetime of bottling everything up and just laughing everything off and trying to make everything into a joke. And then it got to the point where I was like, I, I wasn't joking anymore because I was just like so sick of everything. And coming to Andy's Man Club, it helped me a lot. Like seeing other men um, be able to kind of wear their heart on their sleeve and cry in front of me and talk about their sort of deepest fears and worries and. It's helped me in my personal relationships outside of Andy's Man Club as well. I'm able to talk to my parents about my own mental health or my wife or all of my friends. And, um, you know, I don't feel any stigma around it. I know there is some stigma still out there, but personally, I don't feel any, any stigma around talking about my own mental health. And I'm a lot more able to do it articulately and to be able to kind of describe how I'm feeling. It's just helped me so much to have that as an outlet. Yeah, it's always different every week. You see different guys every week and um, it's, it's always interesting. It's always thought, thought provoking. I always walk out feeling better. Yeah, I'm Wilco, this is my story. So um, I've struggled with my mental health uh, from probably being a teenager, maybe all my life, hard to tell. Um, but I didn't really have many good coping mechanisms at all. Um, I think, I think I first started to notice it properly when I was a teenager. I was very angsty. I was very upset about the world and uh, a lot of internalized kind of, um, not rage, but you know, a little bit of, um, yeah, like I say, I was quite angsty and I turned quite rebellious and um, there wasn't any one thing that happened to, to sort of make me feel the way that I did. but. I only look back at it now and know that it was depression because of the things that I've learned since. Um, but back then I kind of just thought I was just a, um, destined to kind of not enjoy myself a lot of the time. I just um, really struggled with life, to be honest. And it was, uh, yeah, I used to drink a lot. Um, I used to beat myself up all the time. I, I'm very self-critical in my own head. My, my inner monologue has, has a tendency to be very harsh and very, um, yeah, ruthless. I was bottling a lot of stuff up and it was coming out in not very nice ways and it wasn't really... Um, I, I felt like something had to change because I felt like I was holding myself back um, by not being able to open up and I think by that point there was a bit better understanding of our mental health in general and you could see through Andy's Man Club that people were starting to open up and that, that it was okay to talk and it's something that I tried to convince myself a few times to go down. Um, but I guess, it, again, the sort of inner cynic in me was like, oh, it's not going to work for me. Like, um, I know what I need to do. I just can't do it sort of thing. I was a bit defeatist maybe, but for me, I know that my depression and anxiety are always going to be there, but it's, something that I can stay on top of. It's something that I can manage. And for me, it's been so much better since I started Andy's Man Club. And so yeah, I still, I still have my ups and downs. And I think that's just part of life. I think we're, we're living in a, in a world that can be cruel and we're all gonna face adversity and we're all gonna have our struggles. So it's great that we've got somewhere like Andy's Man Club um, to go and be able to, 
to get some of that pressure off our shoulders um, and talk to other guys who are going through the same thing. It's a constant battle for everybody, mental health, and it's something that we all need to keep on top of. And a thank you to ITV and to Emma Dale for, for shedding a light on it as well and giving us a platform to, to let other men know that it is okay to talk. Anybody watching this that does feel like you do need to go talk, go to an Andy's Man Club. You've seen on the episode that it really does work. Just the progression in Paddy in that short space of time. We see that every week. We've felt that every week. That's been us at some point, probably on more than one occasion. Check out the website, check out all the social media sites. We're all over it. 120 plus groups nationwide, plus an online platform. Please use it and it's okay to talk, fellas. Yes, do you right. Wow. So, yeah, how, how does it feel like working alongside those guys knowing they've been gone through some of the same issues that Paddy has? I uh, found it humbling. Uh, I was very proud to be given such a, uh, an incredibly important storyline. Uh, I felt a little bit like, um, you know, that imposter syndrome where you feel yeah. a, bit, a little bit of a fraud. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it was just listening to, to people tell them stories with the research. I'd met many people who'd gone through the same thing. Um, and it just made you feel that there but for the grace of God, for a start. Uh, and also that there was hope as well. There was, there was an answer to this and the answer was quite simple that you need to start talking, you need mm. to tell someone. And uh, of course, the problem with that, the caveat is that as males, we don't talk. Yep. We, we're lucky that we're in a job where we dissect what we talk about, yeah. uh, even down to the, the merest comma or pause, I suppose, in some cases. Yeah, um, yeah just meeting people like that all the time, you're just like, my God, you know, there is an answer. There's a, yeah. You've gone through this when they felt there was nowhere to go. That was the end of it, you know. To, I mean, to feel we were talking about it earlier about it, with, to feel that uncomfortable in your skin and in yeah. your mind that you you maybe want to uh, end your life is 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 uh, is some place to be. So yeah, to be put into that position of speaking to people uh, along the way, at Andy's Man Club, Samaritans, um, people that have lost loved ones, people that have attempted suicide, uh, people that have gone through these black depressions and come out the other side. It's it's at times felt bleak, but. Uh, it's also doubly felt uh, triumphant and, mm. and full of hope and, and an incredible experience, yeah. yeah. How important do you think it is for shows like ours, Soaps, Emmerdale, to sort of portray stories like this? I think we would be mad to squander the opportunity to highlight important moral issues and I think uh, Soaps have a large audience uh, of male and female people, uh, young and old, yeah. uh, to to give a moral compass and mm. to, in some ways, give, um, as in this story, it's quite a repellent story, really, on the page. Uh, but the, the way that the role, the writers and the researchers packaged it in a way that was palatable and clear, when really it was, it's a subject that many people want to turn away yeah. from. I thought it was was genius. I yeah. thought it was fantastic, and we didn't squander that opportunity. We we did push it forward, and uh, I thought it was. And um, what a great platform to use to to show people. Well, that without the, our show, because we have so much, we're on every night of the week. Mm. Our, our show has time to let the story take its natural time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree with you. Really like there's no position. sailing off into the sunset, yeah. is there? And yeah. as people said before, you don't just get over depression. So thankfully, yeah. six months down the yeah, line, exactly. still at going to therapy and doing that and still seeing the glimmers of it and, and I had a scene the other day with Lisa Riley and it was just a, a pause and he just goes I wish I didn't keep feeling like this and you're like oh great you yes. know it's just showing that it isn't a relapse you know it's it, it's it's like that you know and yeah. steadily it will get better you know it will get better yeah and for you, mm. how did it feel portraying your side of it, a, a kind of a loved one and um, a, 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 f a friendship that had gone back the years, trying to support somebody and maybe the frustrations of trying to look after and listen to someone that was going through this? Yeah, I thought they wrote that part of it really well because I think, um, if you remember, Mal was really over 
overwhelming I think to begin with when, when Paddy first came back from the woods and he hadn't done it and you know but Marlon tried to just like swaddle him you know and it was it was too much and I think that's quite common really just panic born out of panic yeah yeah and it wasn't like a love story where it was all oh it's all all right yeah now, was it exactly. you know, like you got on my nerves yeah. and like, yeah. I really quite like yeah, yeah it was I thought it was quite smart writing yeah. really because I think that felt really true yeah I, I found it as I, I, I guess I've, the way it's been written the way it's been researched and structured same with you what you were saying before I, I feel like they've done it in such a way that Marlon's journey has been just one of, he's just been totally at sea, really. He's, and it just shows you how much a person needs professional attention. Yeah, we're not trained for it, are we? Yeah. That's it, yeah. So he's, he's improvised his way through it, and it's, it, at times it's been great, but more often than not, it's been misjudged and clumsy. Yeah. But we've seen that you know, talking to friends and family is one way to help. Yeah, I think that's absolutely true. And uh, or a stranger, or uh, a professional. There's the Samaritans. There's the GPs, NHS. There are multiple uh, suicide prevention charities as well as Andy's Man Club. Yeah. Um, that there are a myriad of places where you can go to Google it. You know, yeah. but just talk. Yeah. So head to ITV forward slash advice for a range of different resources that are available. And remember, it's okay to talk.